Okay, this is going to be a recap of the filling of the Vortex gas piston. Uh, this is my 125 Sniper 25 Cal. Uh, this is the 125 Sniper 25 Cal that I just did and achieved over 34 foot-pound of energy with the Predator Polymags, which is very impressive. Uh, this was only shooting at 6... 70 to 680 when I before I tore it apart tuned it trigger work uh, New seals piston seal new breech seal all that jazz and uh, Then I filled up. I still had low FPS out of it. And that's when I decided to Start tinkering with the air pressure of the vortex gas piston since I found very little to nothing on that subject and especially no videos so I accomplished this with this one horrible video I made and I'll admit it uh, so I'm going to do the same with this one and this is my pride and joy I shoot up to 175 yards with this rifle and this is only doing 730 to 740 so I'm gonna see if I can bump it up a bit uh, the accuracy is still pretty good with this I really haven't had a chance yet if it's not great I can detune it and I'll show you how and that's pretty much what this whole video is going to be about I'll give a little background on how I tune what I do uh, I don't cross hatch the whole tube it's kind of like an engine block if it has low miles on it there's no heavy scratches there's no warpage in the tube you don't have to go crazy just polish it I mean an engine block with say 100,000 miles on it is torn up, beat up. It may be oversized, but these are pretty good. It's only rubber on steel. Unless there's a deformity in the tube itself, which might let air pass by the piston seal, then you will probably experience issues. But if the barrel's good, if the tube's good, then you should be pretty good. All right. Uh, already got all the bolts out I have another video on me shooting at 175 yards just in case uh, I know it's kind of hard to believe and I didn't even think these things could shoot 50 yards when I first started with the spring uh, brake barrels but uh, that's what I've got it up to now and about four to six inch grouping at 175 yards is damn good with a spring barrel magnum no less so let's get started uh, all the bolts are out I'll pull the stock off let me just set up the camera here make sure i have a good angle so that way everybody can see a lot better i will have to put it on the ground i'm not going to do it on the table like i did last time which i found out i'll leave the scope on for now i guess obviously got to pull that out back screw there this comes right off Okay, so what I found out through the other video I made, and that was first experimenting, right here there's a screw that will depressurize the gas piston, and you can leave the gas piston in the rifle, which is a great thing. On the other side, right here, is your fill tube. That goes into the gas piston. You just insert the PCP Hatson uh, fill tube, put that right in there, and you can begin pressurizing it. I didn't depressurize the gas piston last time because it was shooting low, so I just wanted to top it off the 145 bar, which I did. Uh, this rifle has already been gone through, obviously. Uh, I did all trigger work, longer set uh, trigger screws. Like I said, I got new breech seal, new piston seal. A uh, little fine-tuning. D-Bird, absolutely a must. D-Bird when you put the new seal in so you do not chip it. And out of almost every rifle I've ever taken apart, there is a nick in the seal. That's going to cause issues. Maybe not immediately, but later on. So anyways, let me flip this around. And this pin always seems to fall out on every single one, but... I put a little grease there and the stock holds it in. We'll put that in there. 
And the trigger work is pretty much a must if you want pure accuracy, much better accuracy. It just gives you a more predictable trigger, which is going to give lead to better shots. Okay, so what I have here, and I'm just going to start getting into PCP in the springtime. Hatson uh, high pressure pump. You can, which I found is just as easy if you have a scuba tank or spare gas tank, not gas tank, uh, pressurized tank. Here's my uh, fill tube, Hatson fill probe, I should say. This easily slides into here. Yeah, not easily, but as long as you line it up good. Which I had a little issue last time too. You just got to make sure it is centered and make sure there are no burrs. And once you find that sweet spot, it goes right in. Here's the issue. It's a one-way check valve in here. So you cannot know what the pressure already is in the gas in the gas ram or gas piston. So you either have to let all the gas out. I prefer to crony it. I did crony this already. That's why I know I'm at 730 to 740. So I'm only about 12, 12 FPS spread on this. So I know I'm good. Uh, you have to let all the gas out or do what I do is just put this in. I know where I'm at and then bring it up to 145 bar. You can bring it up to 150. I've already all these uh, inside say 150. So I may actually bring it up to 150, see what happens and uh, give it a test there. If it's too much, I'll drain it back out, bring it down 140. It's going to be a pretty much a shoot and test kind of deal. I may have to take it back apart, but you don't have to take it out of the gun. That's the beautiful thing about this. So what I'll do now is take this back out, put it on the ground, which is going to make it easier. And I'll see if I can line this up and I will begin pumping. And I will see if I can get the camera to swing over. It's not very exciting, but I'll go through the whole process and just get this fill tube back in. See if I can get the camera to stay. And yes, I am a newbie to cameras, so that's why my other videos sucked. And I'm going to try to accomplish better now. Okay, as well, long as the fill tube is in there, and hopefully I am focused pretty good. I'm going to release the handle and begin pumping. Like I said, the one way check valve, so you are not going to know. What is in there already but all you have to do is bring it up to 145 and you know that's what will be in there and of course i gotta remember to tighten that screw it does not take long maybe 10 pumps or five Oh, and as soon as you hit the eight mark, that's when you feel the pressure. All right. That's nine. I am at 140. All right, maybe oh, a little bit more than... Maybe 11 to 12 pumps with the hand pump. Let's see where we're at. Oh, almost there. Now, if I could just... Yeah.
maybe one more. Yeah, we'll go just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to say that's at 145. You know what, I'm very tempted to go to 150, just to see what it'll do. You know what, I'll go to 150 if I have to drain it back out and redo it because it's hitting too hard or too hard to pump. Then I'll do that. <clears throat> that is 150 right there. 150 bar. Okay, we'll take this off. Maybe the fill probe is in there. As you can see, hopefully. We'll get. There we go. I'm just about 150 bar. And that's what the uh, pressure is recommended there. And I will. Well, let's back that out. Release the pressure, just like you were doing a PCP. One-way check valve, so no air will return. <clears throat> Gently, of course, I like to put a little silicone just on the O-rings. And it's a little difficult with one hand. Okay. There we go. Goes much easier when you can use both your hands, but. And it was that easy to adjust. So we'll put it back together, break out the crani. Uh, I don't know if I can all make this one long video just to see what the numbers are going to be, but uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to shut it off here and I'll put in, post another video. And we'll see what the cranny reading is. All right, so I hope that helps anyone out. And uh, oh, as far as uh, what I use for uh, doing this tube here, if it's pretty clean, like I said, it's it's a brand new tube. The only way it's really gonna mess you up is if sand got in there, scratch the heck out of it so it won't seal. But honestly, I take about eight sheets of fifteen hundred paper. And I will just put it in there, uh, either use a wooden dowel, and I'll get the middle piece. I put oil on it, and uh, I will attach it to a drill, or I'll do it by hand, and I'll just go back and forth inside. It's 1500, you're just trying to get a nice, smooth finish out of it. Like I said, unless you get severe scratches, or the tube itself is not round, that's what's going to cause a problem with the ceiling. But... This one seems to be great. That one seemed to be great. This just seemed to be under pressurized. I think it came from the factory that way. It just did not have enough pressure in there. If it leaks out, I'll find out because I'm going to keep it for a little bit and uh, crying it some more. Uh, I was getting with Vortec Supremes 1991 grain. I was over 800 to 8. 15 to 818 with those pellets in this and that was uh 20 no hold on sorry that was about 29 foot pounds of energy out of those pellets there so uh polishing also like i said i polish the whole thing i adjust it with the uh, longer screws which you always have to be careful and you're taking that at your own risk if you don't know what you're doing with the trigger Watch a lot of videos, figure it out, make sure you don't get hurt. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. I hope that was a little more detailed and much better video. And I'll uh, post the results of uh, 150 bar on a Vortec gas ram and a 125 Sniper 25 Cal. Thank you.